Thompson, now you're live. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Matt Thompson, and uh, I just wanted to thank all my friends and everyone who has uh, been concerned about me and uh, let you know that uh, I'm alive and uh, out and uh, and doing fine with my lovely wife, Janet, and uh, would like to tell the story of my uh, of my last two weekends. First of all, a couple of weekends ago, my uh, or the weekend before this last one, uh, my family went out to Colorado thanks to some uh, gracious uh, gifts from some good friends of ours, and uh, went skiing. And uh, and uh, when we started back home, uh, one of the cars that we went in broke down, and uh, so we went and we uh, had to buy a trailer to pull it, and we crossed this mountain pass in the middle of the snow and ice, pulling the trailer and managed to do that just fine and, and uh, got somewhere in the middle of Kansas and uh, like an idiot I had a bit of a brain lock and forgot that I was going to use more gas uh, than normal pulling this trailer and uh, there's not a whole lot of stuff in the middle of Kansas and uh, there's no phone service either so uh, we ran out of gas in the freezing cold night there in the middle of Kansas and uh, and uh, we called somebody to come to come get us and they took like an hour and they brought us uh, two gallons of gas was all they could bring which wasn't enough to really get us out of trouble and uh, then about that time a, a state trooper from uh, Kansas uh, Highway Patrol showed up and uh, was the nicest man you, you'd ever want to meet brought us some more gas got us going on our way wished us good luck and uh, it just reminded me that there is still you know like i think of when we were kids the old protect and serve mentality of police is is still out there unfortunately um you know i think it's it's diminishing and uh we're we're, get, we're getting more of this uh i don't know strange kind of policing but uh i'm gonna tell the story of jeff winehouse as most of you know the uh, uh i've become good friends with Jeff, visiting him uh, many times this last year. I believe that uh, Jeff is an innocent man. He's serving 30 years in prison uh, for a crime in which he was the victim, not the perpetrator. And, uh, you know, it's a ridiculous situation. It's very important, I believe, for all of us because uh, it goes to our foundation, found, founding policy that, we, you know, we have to have freedom of the press and freedom to criticize our government. And I believe this is why they went after Jeff. But in any case, I've been visiting Jeff, and I feel like I'm probably the one uh, that's been visiting a, a little bit more than all the others because I've been able to this last year and become very close friends with him. And I, I felt like, uh, you know, if he was in trouble, he would rely on me uh, to come and, and try to help him. And uh, two weeks ago, when I went for my normal visit to see Jeff, I was told he was in the hole, he was being investigated and uh, could no longer uh, uh, have any visitation rights, even behind glass. And uh, so I left, and, uh, and uh, this went on uh, for a couple of weeks, and I tried to give it time for this thing to get resolved, and uh, nothing seemed to be happening. And uh, I was extremely concerned uh, that Jeff was not able to communicate with anybody, including apparently his lawyer, who had told me that he had not spoken to Jeff. So uh, I went back. Friday morning to the prison. Uh, I am on the approved visitors list. And I, I went there. I suspected that I wouldn't be allowed to see Jeff, but I wanted to get some answers because I felt like two weeks is too long to not allow a, a prisoner any communication with a lawyer or anything. And uh, so I, uh, I went there and uh, they said, no, I couldn't see Jeff. So I told the lady at the reception that I would like to see the warden then because I was very concerned. And she said, okay. So I waited calmly. I didn't make a big scene. I just waited over in the corner of the waiting room. And, uh, you know, after about 30 minutes, uh, two guards came out and said that the warden didn't have time to speak with me, uh, that there was nothing that I could learn. I didn't have a right to know anything and that I should leave. And uh, I said that I, I really need to speak to the warden about this because I realized that these two guys couldn't make any decisions. And I, I felt like I, I, I needed to talk to the warden to make sure that he understood that people were concerned. And to me, something seems wrong here. You can't have a guy that, that's not allowed to communicate even with his lawyer. You know, what's going on? Why can't you state a reason? Uh, so eventually the, the, the warden himself came out and asked me to step kind of in the foyer. So at, at this prison, first of all, 
um, you're not even allowed at this prison to take a picture. A lot of people like to go there and uh, if, if they have an inmate in there, take a picture of the front gate or the front flagpole, you know, saying this is where my loved one is. And uh, they don't let you do that. You're, you're not allowed to take any pictures. You can't carry your phone or any devices into the lobby. So I was in the lobby. I didn't have any devices, any phones, any recording, anything like that, because that's their rule. And uh, so when the warden got there, he asked me to step out into the breezeway, uh, which I did. And, uh, uh, and he had another assistant with him. And I asked him to tell me what was going on with Jeff. And he uh, said, I have no right to know that. And uh, I said that I was concerned. Uh, that it might be illegal to hold somebody without the ability to contact even their lawyer. And he said that, you know, I'm not a lawyer. How would I know? I've got no business being there and I need to leave. And uh, and I said, well, I need to find out about Jeff. And he said, you need to leave or I'm going to call the local police. And uh, so I left and I walked out to the parking lot. And, uh, you know, I took maybe, I don't know, 30 seconds or so to check my phone and stuff, as I usually do when I turn my phones and everything back on when I got to the car. And I started driving out. And as I got almost out of the prison in the driveway, uh, the police pulled me over and stopped me. And uh, they said, you need to leave. And I said, I'm leaving. Look. And, and uh, they said, well, you, you're not leaving fast enough. And I said, well, okay, let me go and I'll leave faster. But they ran my license and everything and and uh finally he let me leave and uh so i left and i drove into the town of Monterre and uh i went to a, a hardy's restaurant there to uh, kind of gather my thoughts and figure out what i wanted to do and uh while i was at the at the hardy's there i made uh, two phone calls first of all i called the governor's office the governor of missouri and uh and i let them know at the office there that i was very concerned I didn't make any threatening comments. I made no threatening comments to anybody anywhere other than, you know, I told the warden, the warden that I, I thought it wasn't right what he was doing, but I didn't threaten uh, any action other than I might have mentioned that I was going to notify the governor. Uh, but but I, I made no threats. And so I did call the governor's office, and, you know, that conversation lasted about 30 seconds. They said the governor's in uh, D.C. at the moment, but we will let him know about the situation when he gets back. And I said, okay. And uh, then I called a, a lady named uh, uh, Valerie Winehouse, asked me to call her, Jeff's second wife. So I called Valerie and, uh, you know, spoke to her maybe, I don't know, 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And she was telling, you know, the whole history of their relationship and everything. And, uh, by the time I got done, the cops, uh, I realized that the cops had blocked my car in at the Hardy's restaurant. And uh, they came in there. And I looked up and I could see my car was blocked in and they were obviously wanting to do something. So, and, you know, with all the things that have happened in recent years, I was a bit nervous about that. So I raised both my hands and started walking slowly toward him. And I said, I'm not resisting. I'm not resisting anything. And, and uh, he said, you need to go back, go, go back over to the other side of the restaurant. And, uh, so I did walk back over to the other side of the restaurant. But I said, you know, as I was doing that, I said, you know, what? That's kind of an unlawful order. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm allowed to be here in Hardy's. So uh, if you're going to arrest me, arrest me. So he, he, he did. He did. He came uh, and uh, put my put his arms behind my back, and then all of a sudden there was two other officers. I'm not sure who what their badge were that were there, and, and uh, they gave they uh, started just really crazy intimidation tactics. What's on your phone? What's on your phone? You know, you've been threatening, calling the prison threatening, and, and uh, you know, uh, give us your phone, give us all your devices. And I said, no. And I, they said, well, you've been calling. And I said, no, I haven't called the prison at all. I haven't threatened anybody at the prison. And uh, they said, well, give me your phone. So I said, well, you can look and see that I didn't call anybody. And and uh, and uh, then they said, okay, well, we got the right to take your phone and your iPad. And I said, no. <laughs> I just said you could look at those calls. And uh and uh, so this, uh, you know, they they started all these crazy things, accusing me of all the, all kinds of wild, different different things and threatening. And I, I said, you know, you, you have to tell me what I'm being arrested for. And, and uh, they said I was uh, under arrest for threatening the prison and the warden uh, with violence. And uh, so, 
uh, they took me to the jail and uh, and uh, booked me in. And it was probably from the time they arrested me, I think it was close to about two hours uh, before they finally figured out, you know, what they were going to charge me with. And, uh, you know, to me, to my way of thinking, you know, these are supposed to be law enforcement officers. They're there to enforce the law. So, I mean, if they can't figure out what law I violated until three hours afterwards or two hours, whatever it was, <laughs> what are they doing here? You know, this goes back to the rule of men rather than the rule of law. And uh, so uh, anyway, I got to put in the cell there, a regular cell uh, at the at the county jail, and uh, and uh, you know I was in there by myself at first. It's just a one person cell, uh, but by the time I got uh, I got through the evening, there was at times six people in there, various people, five people in there. And you know, people are curled up uh, with no room to lay flat in there in a, in a one-person cell, and through the night. And uh, and you know, of course, you know, there's like a, a toilet in the middle of the thing. Nobody can get any toothpaste or anything like that. You can't even dry your hands. You know, it's German-infested place. With and uh, so it it made it gave me a, a you know a good eye-opening experience to what really goes on in those places. And then uh, today I was uh, I was released on the cognizance. Um, they have my phone and my iPad, and uh, I don't know why. Uh, and uh, they said that they're being seized and they're they're trying to get a warrant. And uh, and uh, so I, I think you know the the guy already looked at my phone. He knows that I never called back to prison. He established that when we were at Hardy's. Uh, but I don't think they have a right to have my devices, and I think they need to give them back. And, uh, you know, were those devices used in committing a crime? What, what crime? I mean, it's crazy, but I'm charged with a felony. Uh, uh, and as far as I know, I wasn't given documents when I left the prison saying I have to appear at a certain date. But I was to told that I was charged with uh, two offenses. One was trespassing. Uh, which you know, I, I'm an approved visitor at the jail, and uh, when the, when uh, when the warden told me to leave, I left, and uh, and I was at the Hardee's when they arrested me. So how was I trespassing? And then uh, the other one is a felony charge of harassment. And I don't know anything about that charge or what it means, but obviously they changed from their earlier uh, thing that they said that that uh, I was threatening somebody. And, uh, you know, I never threatened anybody. You know, uh, I, I asked the, the warden of the jail to give me some answers, and he did. And he told me to leave, and I did. And uh, so that's where it sits at the moment. You know, I, I wish they would give me my devices back. Those devices were not used to commit any crime, as far as I'm concerned. I committed no crime. I just, I, I, I believe it's important that we reestablish that people have the right to criticize their government. And, uh, you know, if I thought that something wrong couldn't I tell the warden that and I did and uh, so there it is and uh, so that's how it sits at the moment I'm charged uh, with a felony and I don't have my devices but I'm out of jail I'm fine and you did get your suburban back I'm out. back with my lovely wife and <laughs> I, I even got my uh, my car back so uh, thank you for all your concern and uh, we'll see what happens from here thank you guys you touch it I can't get it can you hear me? I mean, and